ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونعود بك من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد ابي ودنس تزنو وادي واشب اكسب الله سبحانه وتعالى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم is Allah and final messenger and there be no messengers after him and we send our blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and also as I always say we thank the sahaba رضي الله تعالى وجمعين والله ما brothers and sisters if it wasn't for the sahaba me and you wouldn't have enjoyed this religion uh, as we know we are getting deeper into the seerah now and now is the most uh, important elements that we are going to be talking about so we've been, we've been discussing the Meccan history we spoke about how Judaism came to uh, to Mecca we spoke about Christianity uh, how it came to Yemen as well and we we spoke about the rulers of Yemen accepting um, Uh, the religion uh, of of Christianity, and then we we spoke about uh, the history of Mecca in itself, and then and then we spoke about the Persian rule coming there, and and also we we did give um, uh, when Christianity came, how Braha wanted to attack the Kaaba, and so uh, today we're going to be looking at the tribe of Quraysh, and uh, there's been a there's been a dispute when it comes to really. Um, where exactly and who is the real tribe of Quraysh but uh, um, some scholars I mean uh, Ibn Hisham and other scholars do mention that Fihr uh, is is the is Quraysh and why Fihr is Quraysh because this is he started the trade uh, and the trade of milk and so he went out and uh, and he used to do that so that that was one of the things they said um, that was the tribe of Quraysh but uh, having said that uh, we are going to look at uh, the history and the life of Qusay ibn Qilab the son of Qilab and uh, some scholars do say this is the real Quraysh and this is where the Quraysh started from because the, there's a saying uh, the scholars do mention at taqarrush majmu'a بعد التفرق. so basically there was the Quraysh was started by Qusay ibn ibn Kilab because Quraysh was scattered and uh, he was the one who actually brought them together. so uh, very quickly, I mean, uh, going back to the history, very uh, when we had initially as well when we started the Sira lesson. That how Ibrahim alayhi salam left Hajar and Ismail alayhi salam into Mecca, and uh, after that we heard that how, uh, in terms of looking for water, she ran uh, back and forth the mountain, and then the water came Zamzam, and then we also heard how Ibrahim alayhi salam, and uh, because of that water, civilization started, and how Jurhum, when they found that water, they came and they asked sorted permission from Hajar and, and showing uh, real great manners they did not uh, enter into they could have just come and, and told Hajar uh, being a woman and uh, being a woman that she was and uh, they could have come and taken over the place but they didn't do that and they did really practice their, their manners uh, and the 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 um, you know the honor they had, and they asked uh, her to l ask permission to use water, and they also paid for that, and that's how we learned Ismail got married into the tribe of Jurhum, and from that uh, the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the lineage goes back all the way to Ibrahim uh, alayhi salam. And um, also we said when Jurhum were ruling, Khuza'a came and they took over uh, the land of Mecca from Jurhum. And this was forcibly taken and because of that Jurhum was not very happy. So two things they did. 
uh, one of the things they did was they they buried the well of Zamzam because they were angry and they didn't want it, them to get any any sort of water. And the other thing they did was they uh, took all the the treasures which were in the Kaaba and they buried it uh, uh, so that they. they the, they could not, Huzar could not get hold of that. And also, we spoke about uh, spoke about uh, how idol worship came. And this is, uh, if you remember, that was one of the first lessons we spoke about. And um, today, now we are going to look at the life of Qusay ibn Kilab. And Qusay is the great great grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And um, so. Mm, as I said, the tribe of Quraysh, really the name comes from the man in the family Fihr. And today we're going to learn uh, the lineage of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I'll be testing people afterwards um, and, and I'll be asking questions that, um, you know, who are the people? and uh, of, of uh, uh, the, the, the lineage of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So very quickly, Muhammad is the son of Abdullah, who's the son of Abdul Muttalib, who's the son of Hashim, who's the son of Abd ibn Af, and who's the son of Husay, and who's the son of Kilab, who's the son of Murra, who's the son of Lu'ay, who's the son of Ghalib, who's the son of Fihr, and who's the son of Malik, who's the son of Nadr, and who's the son of Kinana. So once again, we're going to do it. We're going to go all the way from the top now. We've got Kinana and his sons Nadr and his sons Malik and then his son is Fihr and then his son is Ghalib and then his son is Lu'ay and then his son is Murra and then he has a son Kilab and then he has a son Qusay and then he has a son Abd Manaf and then he has a son Hashim and then he has a son Abdul Muttalib and then he has a son Abdullah and then he has a son, which is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now, uh, very quickly, Qusay, uh, the name in, in the Arab, uh, Arabic, it, it does mean Wal Qasi, then uh, Huwal uh, Ba'id. So Qasi is someone who's far away. So basically, after uh, Qusay was born, his father Kilab died. And when he died, his mother Fatima took him with the husband that she got married to and she took him to Sham. And so Fatima was married to a man called Rabia ibn Haram and he was the one, uh, the man who took um, Qusay uh, to, to Sham. And also Qusay's the real name was Zayd. So his name was Zayd ibn Qilab as we said, Wal Qasi hu al Ba'id that the name Qusay actually comes because he went far away. But then when he came to a youthful age, he left uh, Sham and he went back to Mecca and he started gathering his family and he became uh, very well known in the society. And, and uh, basically what we see that, uh, that he becomes um, a, a very honorable man and he's a very generous man and uh, he, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's very, very well respected by the people of uh, Quraysh and also by other people and he's the one, as we say, he's uh, a taqarrush that Quraysh uh, was tajammu ba'd al-ba'd al-tafriq so he started getting his family members together and he always had this in the back of his mind that um, uh, that you know the, the, it was always in the back of his mind that this land has been taken away by Jurhum and uh, this land belongs to us so if I was to tell you to look at that situation uh, of what Jurhum was because their land, land was forcibly taken from them. You could actually think of two countries today where you can look at people of Palestine where their land's been taken forcefully and also the people of Kashmir where their land's been taken forcefully and they, they are living uh, you know, under the rules of the tyrant, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them freedom so they can have their land back. So, 
Jose became really well known, very well loved, uh, really um, loved by the community. And the leader of Khuza at that time married the leader of Makkah, whose name was Hulayl, and uh, he married his daughter to uh, Qusay and he married the daughter of the leader of Khuza'a and he became more powerful, more well known and became, he was a very generous man and was very well loved by the people and so you know, basically what happened was when the leader of Makkah died which was the leadership was with Khuza'a um, he proclaimed himself as a new leader and when he did that it, it turned into a massive argument and this massive argument led to a war between the two parties as Hussein also had a great number of people on his side because he's gathered his family members from Quraysh and he had a great support and because of that um, this uh, the tribe of Quraysh started fighting Khuza and uh, and uh, let's uh, go back to one thing which is very important uh, see the the fight started because of the rule of Mecca and for Arabs, you need to understand honor is something very big and it's something very important. So the ruling of Makkah is very honorable because you are dealing with uh, the tourists and the Hujaj that are coming to the city and they they love the city because of the presence of Kaaba and the people um, there are honor the the honor of the people of uh, the leadership uh, changes uh, Kiswa the cloth of the Kaaba and they're the ones who are uh, you know um, giving water and supplying water for for um, the Hujjaj that are coming in. So for Arabs, honor, Ikram was a, was a very big thing. And that's why they, they went on massive wars. And they did all these things what they did. So, and basically the fighting uh, is, is a very bloodied fighting. And there are s severe casualties from both sides. And people are at a point that they're really getting scared now that uh, if this fight goes on, both these tribes will lose many people and there will come the, a time where there will be no one from both sides left alive to tell, to even, uh, to even live and even carry uh, the name of their family. So what they decided, they started to do a negotiations and while doing negotiations they agreed to actually go to the man who was a very well known man in the community and everyone agreed to what he said so they decided to go to this man who was Ya'mur ibn Awf and Ya'mur ibn Awf was uh, as I said was really widely respected so he was selected uh, to mediate between t these two groups and uh, so they also agreed and they pledged on the Kaaba that whatever Ya'mur ibn Awf uh, um, agrees to they will go with that and and uh, they will agree uh, with his decision uh, no matter if the decisions against them as well so uh, they 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 both take oath both the tribes and they they go to Ya'mur ibn Awf and now Ya'mur ibn Awf uh, wants them to put their arguments forward and Qusay starts with his argument and he says this is our land and uh, and then he starts telling the story uh, about uh, Hajar and Ismail, the, the Zamzam came for our father and they, they these people came, they took it from us and uh, and uh, you know he keeps on uh, telling how they uh, are related uh, I mean going back to as we started early on the lecture and we said um, how uh, Ismail alayhi uh, salam going back and, and basically the um, uh, uh, they, the, 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 what it was, the, the argument was so strong. When Qusay finished his argument, and at that particular time, Khuza, the leader, came forward to put his argument, and and he had nothing to say because they had actually taken the land of, uh, of Jurhum force uh, forcibly, and and because of that, Ya'mur ibn Awf was very easy to listen to the arguments and going back to the source uh, to rule, and he said the uh, the rule the the decision that he made that Qusay ibn Kilab 
will be the owner of every right of the Kaaba and he will be the un a, a disputed leader of Mecca and there will be no uh, uh, sharing of leadership and Khuzar does not deserve anything and all the rightful uh, affair will go back uh, to um, um, Quraysh and Qusay uh, ibn Kilab will be the leader and so as, as we said Ya'mur ibn Awf is a, it was a fair man and he would have never uh, taken anyone's side and listening to both the arguments he came to a fair decision and he understood that the land always belonged to Quraysh and he, he made a decision in their favor and uh, after that because they already had agreed uh, and they already had pledged. Khuzaa gave the right of the leadership uh, smoothly to Quraysh and this is how um, a lot of scholars do say that Qusay ibn Kilab was actually the main person and he is the main leader um, uh, basically the one who really is the rightful uh, person to be called Quraysh. So, I mean, there is a different opinion in that, and we're not going to go much into that. So, but very quickly, when the, the 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 rule of Mecca came, there were few things which were the responsibility of uh, the the people of of. Uh, the responsibility of, of the leaders. So one of those uh, things was Al Ijaba. So Al Ijaba is basically the custodian, uh, being the custodian of Kaaba. So they're going to be the leaders, as you see today. Uh, the leader, the the king of Saudi is the custodian of both the Haramain uh, of Medina and and also Mecca. So and also Al Siqaya. Al Siqaya was giving water and we had our father our father was to give food and this was uh, basically a father comes from the word to give but then later on because of the generosity and the honor of the arabs they didn't want to give out just water so they started giving out food as well and then um Qusayb and kilab uh, also created um, and then uh, sorry there was a liwa a liwa was a banner and the flag also they get to hold that and they're the ones whoever had the liwa they were the ones who can call for war and call for action and also al qiswa which is the changing of the cloth of the kaaba there's another thing which was added in there and that was a um, nedwa and a nedwa was Dar al Nedwa. And so Qusayb al Qila, when he came into power, he decided to actually build a massive hall, if you wanted to call it today, and a massive assembly place. And this assembly place became uh, like the parliament of Quraysh, and they would come and talk and uh, make and take major decisions in this place. So uh, basically, uh, this was like a function hall and all important events will, would actually be you know all the important events would actually be taking place in there and big announcements were made from this place and uh, and also announcements for war and if the leaders wanted to get together they would come here and in different types of events uh, weddings and every other thing was taking place also they had a ceremony in Jahiliya where the women when they became uh, to an uh, to the age uh, reach the age of puberty, and they would wear the outer garment. So for that ceremony, the women would gather and would uh, do the ceremony for that girl who had reached puberty. So um, you know, he was a man, as we said, a man of a great honor, and he was highly respected. But um, when he became, and he was taken into high regards, but when he became the leader and became the honor of Quraysh, um, now he was even well respected. And now he became more generous and he was giving out. And also now when we spoke about Dar al-Nadwa, Dar al-Nadwa also, if you remember from the CRR, which we're going to be talking about uh, in future, that this is the same place in the night, the assassination of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The decision is b b taken place, as actually being made by the leaders when they gather in Dar al-Nadwa in that night. And that was done in, in Dar al-Nadwa. This was that place and also the plot of uh, as I said the plot of killing Rasulullah so um, uh, 
Now going into the story, uh, we will learn, we also learn that Qusay had four sons. And Qusay had four sons and these sons were very well known uh, in the society and just like the, the father well respected except for one son. So he had Abdul Dar, he had Abdul Manaf and Abdul Manaf is actually the great great grandfather of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he had Abdul Shams and he had Abdul Qusay. So Abdul Qusay, Abdul Shams and Abdul Manaf are the ones who are really well respected, very well known in the community, the community loves loves them well loved but there is one son who is uh, not as respected as the other three and the father knows that Hussein knows that and that's Abdul Dar and the father is worried so in his lifetime the father does a thing he bars all the children from the rights of the leadership uh, and it gives all the rights to Abdul Dar because he understands that all the other sons are respected, people still like them, people are still going to love them. But my son, um, Abdul Dar, is the only one who actually is not well respected. And maybe by making him the leader, people start respecting him. So, all these uh, actions that we spoke about, Al Nedwa, Al Rifada, Al Siqaya, and Al Ijaba, all these uh, rights are given to Abdul Dar. And Abdul Dar, as the father, expected when Qusayb and Kilab died. He, as he expected, Abdul Dar now became also respected because of the things that he was uh, given and the rights that he was given and the, the sons, the other sons did not uh, contest that and they were happy with the decision of the father and eventually when Abdul Dar got old and he died, he and, and now the brothers came and uh, they spoke to the sons and they said, look, uh, our father Qusay gave all the rights to your dad because your dad was not very well respected. And because by giving him those rights, your father achieved what our dad wanted. And now we do think we do have right over those things as uh, it was given to our, our brother just to get him the honor. And remember, we, we spoke about that. Honor was very, very big for the Arabs and all these things were part of uh, part and parcel of the honor they were getting so for them uh, to to give away money and and all the material things they these things were not important for them for them the real thing was how honorable they are and how they are seen uh, in the society so basically um, what happens now is um, they are really the, the 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 point comes to where the argument develops into a very big argument and they're about to go on a war and it's also said um, uh, it's mentioned in the sira uh, and even as hawk mentions that that basically they were on the words to go on a war and they had dipped buckets of a uh, bucket of uh, blood uh, just right next to Kaaba and they had dipped their hands and with that blood they had rubbed their hands on the on the cloth on the kiswa and said uh, of the Kaaba and said they were ready to go on a war and they would what that represented that they will fight till their last blood and they do not care until they they uh, until they have life they will fight for their right and so at that point uh, people understood that uh, this will become really bloodied and uh, there was negotiations and eventually they decided to uh, agree and they agreed on uh, uh, dividing the leadership. So when they divided the leadership, Banu Abdul Dar became God the Ijab, it became the custodian of the land and also got the Qiswa and um, also got the hold of uh, a Nedwa. Dar al Nedwa was like an honor. I mean, that was one of the biggest things. Whoever had Dar al Nedwa had a lot of respect in the community. And Abdul Manaf, uh, the great grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he actually uh, got Siqaya and uh, Rifada, which you will see later on in the, the coming series that these two things were which Abdul Muttalib 
was the one who was doing in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So you will be seeing that in in the in the later coming episodes, and uh, so it was transferred from the, his son Al Muttalib and to uh, from Hashim to Al Muttalib to uh, from Al Muttalib to Abdul Muttalib, and then going all the way down, uh, while it reached Abu Talib, and also after that Al Abbas was the one who actually got the honor to to run these affairs. Now, just very quickly, I just wanted to give you a story of uh, Dar al-Nadwa. So, Dar al-Nadwa actually came in uh, the hands of uh, Banu Abdul Dar, and it stayed in the hands of Banu Abdul Dar till the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there was um, uh, a man uh, which was later on became a Muslim. His name was Hakim ibn Huzam radiallahu an. So while Hakim ibn Huzam was in Mecca, uh, he managed to deceive uh, one of the descendants. Uh, of uh, Darul Nadwa, and as we said, Darul Nadwa were the custodians of the, uh, uh, sorry, the the descendants of uh, Abdul Dar. As we said, Darul Nadwa was uh, under the custodianship of of Banu Abdul Dar, and so because they were friends and they knew each other, one day this descendant from Abdul Dar was really drunk, and he was completely zonked out, and he they were sitting down, and um, Hakim even. Uh, Huzam radiallahu anhu thought uh, of this to be a great time while drinking alcohol he said to him will you sell Dar al Nadwa to me and at that point the man was really drunk and he said yes I will sell it to you and Hakim uh, Ibn Huzam said how much will you charge for it and he said I will charge you one bottle of wine and Hakim thought this was a great opportunity to get Dar al Nadwa while the man is drunk. So he got um, some witnesses gathered, he got a contract drawn up just at that point, and he gave him a bottle and he signed it, and that's how he got Dar al Nadwa. And uh, later on, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a uh, long life to Hakim ibn Hazam. And uh, Hakim ibn Hazam uh, actually lived uh, in the time of Rasulullah, he lived in the time of Abu Bakr Siddiq, he lived in the time of Amr ibn Khattab, he lived in the time of Uthman, he also lived in the time of Ali, he also lived in the time of Hassan. But when he came uh, in the leadership of Muawiyah, and, and at that point, he sold Dar al-Nadwa and when he sold Dar al-Nadwa he sold it for 100,000 gold coins and that was dinar 100,000 dinar and so when he sold for 100,000 dinar this was a great amount we're talking about a massive amount over here so if you were to calculate in today's day and age I mean one gold coin could range from hundred dollars and uh, and it could go depending on the weight of that coin but you can do the maths as you can see while I'm doing this lecture I, I wouldn't have been the architect of this place but rather I'm doing the lecture why because uh, this is not my speciality but having said that this was this was one of the greatest um, uh, you know honor for the Arabs and when Muawiyah heard that he said you sold Darul Nadwa you sold the honor of the Arabs and at that point, uh, Hakim ibn Hadab radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, he said this amazing statement, Inna akramakum Allahu inda Allah atkakum. So he said, Inna akramakum inda Allah atkakum. That the kiram, the honor, comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's 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 with the taqwa that the man has in his heart not darun nadwa or not the honor of the money not the honor of the car and the house that you live in so as i said the arabs were very big on this materialistic honor and this honor they 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 uh you know lasted for but the real honor allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that is in taqwa and taqwa is how close you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's another ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
الذين يتخذون الكافرين اولياء من دون الله من دون المؤمنين and those who take disbelievers as allies instead of the believers ايبتغون عندهم عزة فإن العزة لله جميعا that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying do they seek them uh, as them honor, power, something from them, but indeed honor belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What to izzu man tasha, what to zillu man tasha. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives honor whoever he wishes, and Allah is the one who gives, uh, you know, uh, uh, Allah is the one who gives uh, disgraces anyone he wishes. So, uh, going back to uh, the story now, when Qusay, when Abd Manaf gets the power, when he uh, dies, he has his son Hashim, and Hashim is uh, um, uh, now what Hashim does, and well, where his name becomes really famous, why his name becomes Hashim, where the name he gets, is because as we spoke about our father, and we spoke about Siqaya, and we spoke about for the Arabs, they didn't feel just giving water. So because of their honor they started this practice of uh, uh, giving food as well and also just not plain water they would uh, mix uh, some kind of honey in it or they would mix m milk in it and that's how they would give milk and also uh, there was no zamzam well as you know it was buried by Jurhum so they would even get water from outside from a from a hill and that was a difficult place to get water but because they for their honor they wanted to look after the hujaj and they would do that and uh, the, and so Hashim what he, one of the practices that he did was uh, he uh, used to because there was a lot of people that would come and it was not viable for them to give them meat so uh, for food so they would put uh, water and they would mix meat in that water they would crush it and also uh, in order to make it more uh, likable they would put bread uh, dip it in water uh, water like soggy bread uh, in water and also mix uh, uh, and also put meat in it and then would make uh, some kind of so that mixture and mixing things in arabic is called hashem so that that process called hashem and because of that his name became really famous so uh, the crushing of bread so someone who crushes bread uh, is is uh, that process called Hashem and because of that his name became very famous and also uh, if you guys wanted to just uh, try to think what this this uh, may look like uh, it's something like the Shariba the, the Shariba is, is a Iraqi dish in the, with soggy bread and meat in water so something that they would do with Shorba so and so also another thing that he did he was very famous for with the traveling of caravan and this is where the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran li Quraysh ilafihim rihlat ash-shita'i was safe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made it secure for Quraysh to travel uh, and travel safely uh, in in uh, winter and also in summer and uh, in winter they used to go to Yemen and Habasha because it was not because these places are slightly warmer as compared to Sham and Syria because that would get really cold so that was they would go there in in the uh, in the summertime and because they were honored people and people would come and people knew they were the leaders of the Kaaba no one would attack them because of this honor that Allah gave them of Kaaba a hijab and because of this they became so honorable whenever the tribe of Quraysh traveled uh, they were never harmed they were actually protected there was peace for them and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the favors uh, in, in Quran in Surah Quraysh about them so when Hashim uh, was traveling he was he traveled a lot he uh, he would go and uh, would travel well, on the way on a journey to Sh Sham he stopped at Yathrib and we said Yathrib is Medina which is the modern day Medina but at that time it was Yathrib and over there uh, he uh, decided to marry uh, and when he decided to marry he married one of the women uh, 
from uh, Yathrib and while uh, and this was his journey going uh, so so very quickly uh, well, uh, just to just to give you um, just to so so I just looking at the name of the lady so I wanted to give you the name of the lady as well um, uh, so a anyways I mean uh, yes the name of the lady was Selma so Selma was uh, from the tribe of uh, of uh, Banu Najjar so the Banu Najjar was one of the one of the tribes that lived in Yathrib so while uh, Hashim was traveling uh, he ma married this woman from uh, this woman from Banu Najjar and they had a baby while he was still there they had a baby and they named the baby Sheba well, because uh, in Arabic if you know Sha'ab is uh, someone who's got grey hair and that's the term and that's from where uh, this child got the name Sheba and we know this child very commonly in today's time as Abdul Muttalib Abdul Muttalib was not his actual name his name was Sheba Sheba ibn Hashim so why, why well, because he had this white streak running in the middle of his hair and because of them uh, because of that white streak they named him uh, they named him uh, Sheba and so at that point um, Hashim could not stay he carried on to his journey and he reached uh, while he reached in Sham he died uh, in, in Gaza and uh, Gaza is present day Palestine and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free the people of Gaza Ameen also uh, very similar to the story of the father of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who also died while he was traveling now Sheba uh, Selma did not think viable to go and live in a foreign land and she lived uh, in Medina she carried on living in Yathri with her family and her family was there she had no uh, issues with that so basically uh, one day uh, Al-Muttalib who was the brother of Hashim he came around and this was when uh, Sheba had become uh, a teenager and he had grown up and he knew what his roots were and Al-Muttalib came and he spoke to Selma and he said uh, uh, I've come here to take the air of, of Quraysh and so he could come back and he could become the leader and uh, he does not need to be here he needs to go back to his land and that's where he has to be and he has to do uh, and he, he, he has to live with the family and he has to carry on the duties what his family has done and so at this point in time uh, the mother and Al-Muttalib had this argument back and forth and she did not want her son to go but then they decided uh, that they will ask the child and if the child agrees to go they will let the child go and so when uh, Al-Muttalib spoke to Sheba and he told Sheba about uh, uh, that it uh, about his father about the family and because of the honor uh, and these as as we mentioned and because he saw that and he saw that uh, as an opportunity to go back and to and to live uh, in in Mecca and to have that life he decided to go with his uncle and uh, at that point in time Sheba uh, was traveling back and when they reached Mecca and it was very well known in Mecca that whenever someone would go they would bring slaves and the slaves, the young slaves so that they can train them and they can make them uh, uh, really good at some trade and that's one of the reasons why his name became Abdul Muttalib as you guys know Abd means slave and Al Muttalib was his uncle so that's how his name became Abdul Muttalib and it stayed with him throughout his life after that and that's how most of the mainstream Muslims today we know him as Abdul Muttalib and uh, uh, and that's also the name which is mentioned by the historians in the seerah but uh, just uh, even for knowledge it is good to know that his name was actually uh, Sheba and so that's how uh, we, we spoke about and that's how he comes and when Al-Muttalib dies Sheba becomes the leader and we spoke we did say that he is the undisputed leader uh, of um, uh, 
the Quran of the Quraysh at that point in time, and is really well respected. And uh, uh, also, uh, uh, this is how uh, from this is the main lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will start. And there are many uh, few miracles that will happen to his grandfather, and that will carry on. And that will go all the way to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we're not far away from starting the actual birth of Rasulullah. Inshallah, in the next episode, we will talk about the father and also talk about some of the miracles that Allah made possible for his grandfather. And so very quickly, just going back to the lineage again, just for us to remember, and hopefully you guys remember, uh, it's Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, the son of Abdul Muttalib, the son of Hashim, the son of Abd Manaf, the son of Qusay, the son of Kilab, and the son of Murra, the son of Lu'ay, the son of Ghalib, the son of Fihr, the son of Malik, the son of Nadr, and the son of Kinana. And some people also also worth mentioning why we stop at Kinana because some people also mention Kinana was the start of Quraysh. But the more correct opinion for us is uh, that Fihr was actually the start of Quraysh. See, remember one of the lessons that we learned today that the Arabs uh, were very big on honor. And we do see in today's society as well that people are very big on honor and this, this honor that people uh, are always going after and what we have, uh, the materials that we carry and the houses that we live in, the areas that we come from and that makes us really honorable and that, that deludes us at some point. But really what we need to understand that honor comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's that izzah that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given that izzah and he was given that izzah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what people said, no matter what happened in, in, uh, in his life, how he was, uh, you know, uh, kicked out of his own home, of his own land, how uh, they came and uh, they plotted against his, to kill him. Even then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him the leader of the whole Arabia. And that was not just uh, Mecca or Medina. He became the leader of the whole Arabia. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, really uh, you know, allow us to follow and allow us to be from the people who have taqwa. Allow us uh, from the people who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who feel the honor in fulfilling the sha'ir and the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullahu li wa lakum fa astaghfirullahu innahu al-ghafoor rahim.